Are you a US technician ham who wants to get the most out of amateur radio? You've come to the right place. In this video, I'll discuss five things that you can, as a US tech, get the most from your ham radio license. A lot of them are very cheap and you might already have suitable equipment. Now a lot of hams started with an HT and might not have got much further. You've probably got one still sitting on your shelf. Lots of hams used it when they started, but after a while might not have done much with it. Well, I've got news for you. Today is dust off your bow thing day. Get it out of the cupboard, dust it off, give it a charge, and have a bit of a think. Go to your local high point, preferably with your best antenna, and put out calls. On two meters simplex, 146.52 or on 70 centimeters 446.0 they are simplex calling frequencies and you may be able to get people responding from quite some distance away if you don't have mountains nearby at least go to a point that's above surrounding terrain the side of a lake or a beach can work well also really important is current information on repeaters for instance, repeaters might have changed, there might be new linked repeater systems, and you might be able to talk much further away than you thought you could with just a handheld. There's websites like Repeater Book, and that will tell you information about repeaters near you and their capabilities. And you might find you might be able to contact people hundreds of miles away via a linked repeater system with a repeater that's conveniently near you. So have a look at that. You never know what you might be able to work with a HT from your location. Another possibility is FM satellites. Uh, it helps if you've got two HTs. I've done videos on them. Uh, you basically, when the satellite's overhead, transmit on one frequency, could be two meters, listen on the other, could be 70 centimeters, or the other way around. And you can have contacts over quite a large part of the United States, maybe even into Canada, depending on where you're located, all with a pair of cheap handheld transceivers. It does help if you have better antennas, like a small beam for your transmit part, but even if you've got the rubber ducky, you can still get into a satellite and be able to have contacts. You do need to plan your satellite operating as the satellite may be only up and workable for 10 minutes at a time. But if you time it right, there could be occasions where you are in a spot and there's several satellite passes that you can take advantage of. For more information, go on to AMSAT, that's amsat.org, and click on Satellite Info, and that will tell you all you need to know about various amateur satellites, the ones that are active, their frequencies. You need to set up your transceiver so that you can transmit and receive on the right frequencies, as well as subtone, CTCSS. And along with the times for your location, you'll be able to get on to satellites and make contacts over quite long distances. It can be fairly crowded, so maybe choose a less popular time maybe late at night, early in the morning, and also check out passes that are the highest. The highest passes will give you the best results with a handheld transceiver, although if you are at a spot like near a lake or a sea where you've got the horizon goes all the way out, then you can take advantage of low passes and get some longer distance contacts. Now, of course, we are picking up with the solar activity, which is a big, big bonus for US tech hams. Because as well as VHF, UHF microwaves, US techs have the bottom 500 kilohertz of the 28 megahertz band. And you can use phone, SSB, CW, digital modes, all in the bottom 500 kilohertz of the band. So a great opportunity to be working DX, you might have had a listen a few years ago and not heard much. Well, have a listen again. Conditions have really picked up and 
you might be able to get much, much further than what you thought and more reliably. And if it's summer as well, you've got Sporadic E, which can give you some great interstate contacts as well. So look at 28 megahertz, even if you don't have much room at home for an antenna. Well, something like a quarter wavelength ground plane is only nine or 10 feet per element. You could even make a dipole that's about 18 feet long and that can get you on the air on 28 megahertz. Or if you want to put in a bit of effort, consider Morse code. Um, as a US tech, you've got privileges on 3.5, 7 and 21 megahertz. And the power output you can use is 200 watts, which might not seem very much compared with people that have kilowatt amplifiers, but trust me, 200 watts is plenty of power to be working DX on CW. And you've got access to quite a few frequencies down there. You just don't have the bottom 25 kilohertz. Yes, there is some DX that you'll miss by not having that, but there's still a lot of DX that use frequencies in the US tech Morse segment. Uh, some of the DX stations do send Morse quite quickly, so as a beginner, just learning the code, try and make some local contacts first to get your speed up. And for that sort of thing, you could maybe even try some parks on the air, or POTA, uh, or summits of the air. I have done a POTA introductory video, but if you can get yourself on a, in a park and you put out a spot, then as the activator, you call the shot. So it doesn't matter if you're only transmitting five words a minute code, then that's fine. Everyone else has got to slow down to your speed and you're not sending very much information anyway. So uh, you can still have contacts reasonably quickly if you're activating a park on Morse. And you can get simple QRP transmitters for seven megahertz. Uh, there's even some kits you can get don't get the really really cheap kits but provided you've got a couple of watts and a decent receiver you can get some quite good distances on seven megahertz uh, with a morse code transceiver so think about morse code it's an extra skill and learn it even if you can just send your call sign and a signal report you can get computer programs that can send and even receive morse uh, another thing you could do um, build your own transmitter on a band like 7 megahertz, that's very, very simple. Again, it's going to be Morse code only, but something with two or three transistors. Even if you don't actually make contacts with it, you could at least use an online SDR. Uh, there's a website called Kiwi SDR where you can find one. And for a band like 7 megahertz, if you find one that's, say, 200 miles, three or 400 miles away, during the day, provided it's in a low noise location, you can probably hear yourself. That's a good distance on seven megahertz. So build a little transmitter, put up an antenna like a half wave dipole, and you could at least hear your own transmission. And later on, when you learn Morse code, um, yes, you do have to identify. You can just, um, um, you know, just at least memorize your call sign and just send it, that will do. Later on, learn some of your basic things like CW and signal reports and then you'll eventually be able to have a morse code contact um, another possibility uh, this will require a bit more expensive equipment uh, vhf uhf privileges if you've got an ht you might only be used to fm maybe even digital modes uh, for some of the better ones but ssb is completely different again uh, you can get longer distances especially if you've got horizontally polarized antenna there are, in some areas, activity sessions or contests or QSO parties or whatever. You could get maybe 200 miles with a quite low power SSB setup on a band like 2 meters. And don't forget 6 meters or 50 megahertz. With the solar count going up, there's a possibility of DX. Uh, North-south paths are are probably going to be the best so you might even be able to work into you know, Mexico South America uh, maybe even across the country particularly in summer when the sporadic E season comes in so don't overlook 50 megahertz and going up higher 2 meters 70 centimeters you've got tropospheric ducting or tropo 
Um, often during the summer months or when there's a temperature inversion, that can really improve your distances, particularly if you've got a body of water between you. Depending on where you are, you know, Gulf of Mexico, that can be handy up and down the coasts as well. You can get some great distances with VHF and UHF. So that's a few of the things that you can do as a US tech. Yes, you don't have all of HF. You are quite limited there, but there's still things on HF you can do, or you can explore VHF and UHF, even microwaves a bit more thoroughly. And... Yeah, so there's a lot of fun. You won't get bored, and I hope that I've inspired you to look up a few things. There'll be videos on all these topics. I've done a few on some topics, and there's also my book, Ham Radio Get Started. That's Ham Radio Get Started. That's sort of an introductory guide to amateur radio, and if you've got a US tech license, then I think that will help you as well. So details on my website, vk3ye.com or search the title on Amazon. So that's it for me, Peter, AK3YE. Have fun, good luck, and let us know how you go in the comments.